Flying in the Greater Phoenix area has its own special set of challenges caused by our awkwardly shaped upside down wedding cake known as Bravo Airspace, depicted here in this super cool airspace video we made using Minecraft. Now, I'm usually going north out of Deer Valley Airport, but every once in a while, I need to go south, and the most efficient way to do that is by flying through the Bravo airspace. For pilots, this can be incredibly intimidating because our impression of Bravo airspace is that it's for big jets and that it has the fastest talking controllers around. But it's easier than you think as long as you're prepared, so let's dig in how to do it. The first thing you need to do before you even get in the plane is take a look at the terminal area chart and figure out how the transition works. Transitions are depicted by these magenta arrows and help you safely fly through the congested airspace. So to transition, I'm gonna have to be inbound on one of these two routes, then make a turn to the east or west for the transition. Last, I'll turn back to the common point and fly outbound. Which transition you get usually depends on which direction is being used for takeoffs and landings. Now, once you've reviewed that transition, you can hop in the plane, get airborne, and head in the direction of the transition. As you approach the Bravo airspace, grab the ATIS report, and you don't actually need this, but it will give you which runways are in use, letting you know which transition to expect. Since operations are on runway sevens today, I know that we'll be using the west transition. This means that we'll just be flying over where they're landing and departing to give everyone space. So all we need to do now is make our initial call to air traffic control. Oh, and I'm matching together a larger flight that I did with my buddy Joe Caraggio of Ramp Rat Racing in his beautiful Lancer Legacy, and just wanted to give him a huge shout out for helping us do this. But you're gonna notice some of these clips are from different times throughout that flight, so just, you know, bear with us. Phoenix Approach, Experimental Lancer 385 Alpha Sierra's on 9,200, saying 4,500. We have information Victor at uh, Deer Valley, and we'd like to do the uh, Bravo transition. So just like making initial contact with any other controller, you would start with the five W's we talked about in our air traffic control video. Who you're talking to, who you are, where you are, what is your request, and with what information. In our situation, we didn't give them our exact location or where we were going because we were on flight following and they already knew what we were doing. But when we made initial contact, we could have also used a call out point or our distance and direction from the airport to so that they could locate us. And we should have included our direction of flight or destination there after that transition request, like this. Phoenix Approach, Experimental Lance Air 358 Alpha Sierra, 10 miles north at 3000, requesting transition Tucson. And as far as the ATIS information goes, if you're landing at a local airport, you would want to let air traffic control know that you have that local airport's ATIS information, just like we did because we are landing at Deer Valley Airport. Anyways, once air traffic control gets back to us, the first thing that they're going to do is give us a squawk code, like they did earlier that day when we weren't on flight following. Five out the squawk zero three three one. Squawking zero three three one five out zero. But once you're squawking, you would get instructions back from air traffic control. Terminal 3 at 5 Alpha Sierra, Phoenix Approach, Phoenix Altimeter 3000. Put your Bravo airspace via the west transition and maintain 5,500 while in Bravo airspace. Their reply will contain the current altimeter setting, which transition to use, an altitude assignment, and most importantly, clearance into the Bravo airspace. You cannot, I repeat, can not enter the Bravo airspace without hearing these words but you just confirm your instructions, including that Bravo clearance, and then proceed to the transition and fly the route. Cleared through the uh, Bravo via the west transition, 5,500 uh, Lancer 385 Alpha Now things may not play out this smoothly. There could be a lot more back and forth between you and the controllers, or you could be left waiting for a response. Bravo controllers are very busy, and between making your initial call and their reply, they could communicate with several other aircraft, which is exactly what happened in our morning call. Squawking 0331, 5 Alpha Sierra. 95 Bravo Delta. November 3, 5 Alpha Sierra, radar contact. Uh... So we use some editing magic in this video, but just be patient and give yourself some extra distance from the Bravo airspace for communications and clearance. Now, you're not done from here. You still need to listen for your call sign and follow any updated instructions or handoffs. Said the card call Alpha Sierra, contact approach 120.7. 120.75, Alpha Sierra, good day. Afternoon, Phoenix, experimental answer, 385 Alpha Sierra, 5500. 385 Alpha Sierra, Phoenix approach, 7 4500. 
4,500, five officer. Class Bravo airspace is cut up into several sectors based on location and altitude, and you may be handed off to one or a few of them before your transition is complete. And finally, after you finish the transition and have left Bravo airspace, you're gonna get one last call from air traffic control, canceling your radar services, which means you can proceed with your flight. Five Alpha Sierra, you're leaving things Bravo airspace, road service terminated, clock speed, fire, pain, change approved. Five Alpha Sierra, have a good day. Now, a quick catch to that. They may continue flight following for you to your destination until you keep squawking that code. Each situation is a little different, but let's talk about that flight following real quick. If you're using it, you still have to request a Bravo transition. It's not a free pass to do whatever you want. It does make things a little easier on the communication side, which is why I had to do all that extra explaining. But because some of these radio communications can be hard or intimidating, make sure to check out our video sponsor, Plain English. They have an entire section on airspace entry and transitions that will for sure make you sound like you know what you're doing. Plain English really is the easiest way to take control of the comms, so make sure to use our discount code when you sign up to save a little on your subscription. Some final thoughts here. Don't be afraid of Bravo airspace, especially for something as simple as a transition. The controllers are there to help you and they'll guide you through the process. And it won't be nearly as bad as landing in class Bravo, which is going to be one of our next videos. Anyways, engagement on our videos helps us so much. So make sure to give this video a like and leave a comment down below. And as always, share your aviation wherever you can and we'll see you in the next one.